Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Double check and make sure you are still subscribed. YouTube has been unsubscribing people and things like that. They're doing kind of like a purge thing. A lot of times they'll unsubscribe you to channels that you were subscribed to before without you knowing that you've been unsubscribed. So double check and make sure you subscribe. And if you're not, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because wow, the off season, it's off. You, you know, this morning I, I had to take a double take of my coffee. You know how when it's football season, when you wake up in the morning, that doesn't the coffee smell just a little bit more refreshing. The taste is a little more robust. You know, I'll go outside and see how the air is besides hot. But it just gets that feel. You know, when it, back in my day, we used to play on grass. And when training camp was open, there's certain smells that you get used to. One of them is the fresh cut grass or, or the image of the dew early in the morning on the grass. You know, you get, your, get out there in your cleats. You'd have the grass, the clippings that got stuck to your shoes. Your shoes get all wet and your feet get all sweaty. And then you get athlete's foot, you know. And, and then, of course, there was that smell that you would get from your shoulder pads. And if you've never played football, you don't understand what that smell is like. I, and and, and, and I, you just can't get rid of it. Oh, my God. And then, of course, you have the mesh bags where you put all your stuff in so that way, you know, they, that, that's what they wash your clothes and things in. Oh, my God. Practice. And then you can't forget about the Ben Gay and the uh, Absorbing Jr. and all that good old sense that you got. There was so much <sighs> training camp. <laughs> training camp and practice. We sitting here talking about practice. I am so happy that we are finally done with the offseason. Today, the Dallas Cowboys charter will land at Oxnard. Training camp will be open tomorrow. They will get their physicals. And on Wednesday, they will be on the field. Program notes, nothing but the best, will be out there in Oxnard. Shout out to Law Nation. What he's going to be doing is he's going to set up a Dropbox so that way he'll be able to share any content that he has uh, to all of us other YouTube. We're all brothers in arms. I know a lot of y'all think that we're all enemies. We all hate each other and this, that, and the other. But no, the reality is we're all trying to bring you the best content when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. But like anything, you know the old saying, there's more than one way to skin a cat? We may have different views on how we get there. You know, I found out from my man Vosh Lombardi last night that I pissed him. I didn't even know I pissed him off. We were having a conversation and we had a debate. I didn't realize he took that shit to heart and went through and got all his stuff. I just kind of like showed up like, okay, what's up? But listening to all of those guys and things, I got so much love yesterday from all of them. It was crazy because... I had no idea any of them even knew who I was for the most part, you know, back in the day and things. But it's now time for all of us to get to work. We've gone through all the bullshit, you know, answering were the Cowboys wrong about Amari Cooper or will the offensive line be crap? Will Zeke Elliott be done? Should Tony Pollard be the every down back? You know, is Mike McCarthy, you know, on, on the hot seat? Is Kellen Moore the boy genius or is he just an idiot? Is Micah Parsons going to be the next Lawrence Taylor? Will he have the sophomore stuff? So many bullshit ass questions. Well, those are actually weren't bullshit ones. The bullshit ones are, you know, is Dak Prescott a top 15 or top 10, you know, that kind of stuff. Is Diggs actually, you know, legitimate as a cornerback or does he stink? You know, the Cowboys' future uh, ratings three years from now. You know, all the bullshit that we get from the ESPNs. I'm going to say, this is my perspective. If you want your real, the real deal, the real lowdown, without the real bullshit. 
my brothers out there, all of them in YouTube. Like I said, you may not like me and my style that I'm like the Truman Show where you know I'm I'm doing everything else along with talking football, and that's cool. But I guarantee you that there's at least one, if not more, of these guys that are constantly putting in the work, constantly putting in the work to bring you the greatest content on the Dallas Cowboys. I will trust them a hell of a lot further than I will ever trust anybody from ESPN, and that is a fact. So training camp will open. We'll find out who will be joining on the pup list, Michael Gallup. Hopefully it'll be nobody. Let's hope and pray that everybody is healthy to start the year. For the Dallas Cowboys, this year we are starting so much further ahead than we were last year. Just a fact. This was Dan Quinn's first year here, of course, after taking over for Mike Nolan on a defense that literally was about as demoralized as could be. They ended up cutting bait with a lot of veterans that they had brought in that were higher price free agents from Don Terry Poe because Mike McCarthy realizes he likes run stuffers. He likes big guys. And so to circumvent the time of developing player, let's go out and get the Gerald McCoys. Let's go out and get the Don Terry Poe's. Let's get the Emerson Griffins and things. And, of course, we needed a safety. And, of course, we went out and got a Clinton Ha Ha Dix. None of those guys made it through the season. Last year, coming through with a defense that I guarantee you that if you were other teams and said, who on the Cowboys defense would you like to take for yours to be a starter? There probably weren't very many. Demarcus Lawrence, maybe. Maybe Jalen Smith at the time, although Jalen Smith was coming back down from bad season, Diggs. But you didn't look at that defense and say, we got great players. There are questions still at safety. We thought Donovan Wilson was going to be the guy. And all of a sudden, J. Ron Curse steps up and has Buda Baker numbers. Of course, gets screwed by the Madden Raidens and says he's the 20th best cornerback when literally he has numbers that should be in the top five. But be that as it may, we drafted Micah Parsons that a lot of people were pissed off that we drafted. And I'm talking Cowboy fans. And Micah Parsons becomes one incredible wrecking crew and truly the leader of that defense. We end up taking something that was a negative and turning it into a positive. Now, the cake wasn't done. The cake's not finished. We took the right steps in the right directions with that group. And as we start this training camp, understand that Dak Prescott was still working on rehabbing the ankle. But Dak Prescott had just been cleared just to start throwing. And because he was still recovering, ended up throwing more arm than using his body to lead and pump it through for the whipping action, which led to, of course, him not being able to throw most of the training camp and playing in no preseason games. Understand that Demarcus Lawrence was coming in on the pup list recovering from a back surgery. So those negatives that we had, those guys that weren't able to work in training camp, they're there. Demarcus Lawrence has been able to, from captain's workouts, work out the whole off season. This will be a telling thing because now, for the first time in many, many years, he's been able to be a part of everything. And if you don't think practice Makes a difference. Forget about Allen Iverson is th saying things like, how am I supposed to make my teammates better by practicing? Because it's a team sport. And these things are going to be critical. I have said over and over and over again that this training camp is the first real training camp that CD and Dak have really had to work together. For a guy going into his third season, the amount of work that he's had with Dak is very minimal. And I dare say that I believe that we will see a much better combination between the two of those guys this year. I'm excited. Zeke Elliott is not coming to camp with COVID. He's not coming to camp overweight. The PCL is healed. And I look at him and I say, I don't think he's done. When I look at what the offense was doing last year when it was healthy, understand, when it was healthy, here's a crazy thing. 
The Dallas Cowboys, last year, first six games of the season, had five guys on pace to have 1,000 yards or more. And one of them wasn't Amari Cooper. Let me say that again. You were looking at Zeke Elliott rushing for about 1,300 yards. Tony Pollard rushing for about 1,000. CeeDee Lamb on pace for 1,000. Dalton Schultz on pace for about 1,000. And Michael Gallup. No, actually it was Amari Cooper. Sorry. No, no. Forget. Watch that. Watch that. Amari Cooper. I make mistakes. I've never said I'm perfect. Never said I'm perfect. But we had an offense that was truly balanced and dynamic. Three receivers on pace for 1,000 yards. Two running backs on pace for 1,000 yards. But then Zeke, PCL, Tony, plantar fasciitis, Dak, strained calf, offensive line, Blake Jarwin, gone. All of these things contributed to this offense hurting. So understand, I believe that we can get back to where we were last year. I think Tyler Smith is an upgrade over Connor Williams. During those eight games there that the offense was just balling, Lyle Collins only played in one of them. So I don't think that the losses we had are going to be as big as we think they are, especially if we have a fully healthy Dak Prescott, who will bring back the run-pass option and will be more of a threat with his legs as well as his arm. So let's go here. And let's see here what the talking heads have to say this morning before we roll on out of here. With the Cowboys shipping away Amari Cooper in a trade to the Cleveland Browns, it was basically a salary dump. Well, the team also lost Cedric Wilson in free agency. Michael Gallup's coming back from an ACL tear. So this skill group that was once considered perhaps the best in the NFL has some questions. And former Cowboys quarterback Tony Romo thinks that could lead to a bit of an offensive shift for quarterback Dak Prescott. Here's what Romo had to say on CBS Radio about Prescott. Quote, I think he's shown more, he's more than capable of playing great football consistently throughout a year, and I just think it's going to be a little different. You know, because the weapons won't be quite as dynamic, they'll still be very good, but I do think that you'll see teams play them just a little bit different. I think you'll see a shift in philosophy a little bit. The identity might change and get back toward the 2016-ish, 17, 18 season. Reminder, the Cowboys offense was near the top of the league in most key categories last year. They averaged an NFL best 31.2 points per game. And even when only looking at points scored by the offense, they were third in the league behind only the Bucks and the Bills. Remember, Trayvon Diggs kept scoring touchdowns last year. The Cowboys were the only team to score at least 40 points in five games during the 2021 season. All right, so from Tony Romo, the former Cowboys quarterback, to our guy, Dan Orlovsky, our quarterback, Dan, you think Romo is right in the assessment that the Cowboys should go back to being like that 2016, 17, 18 version of themselves? Yeah, ironically, Field, I agree with what Tony said. Um, I think it's twofold, bud. This, this is, I'll start with this. The reality of their perimeter weapons. We're talking about a football team that CeeDee Lamb is their number one. Ultra talented player, but he's third in the NFL in drops since he became a professional football player. So you got to fix that. The number two receiver, Michael Gallup, is going to miss probably a month, right? Because he's coming off torn ACL surgery. And then their number three receiver is a third round pick from South Alabama, Jalen Tolbert, who was a little bit banged up and hurt in the spring, who doesn't have a ton of reps. So it's a little bit by necessity, yeah, that they're going to have to rely more on the run, Pollard, Zeke, and everything. I also think it's this. The best way that I can phrase the Cowboys offense is, is it reliable when it's needed the most? What I mean by that is when they are playing a team that is top-notch defensively, is this, we're going to drop back and throw it all over the lot offense with the offensive line, the quarterback, and the receivers that they have? Is it what's needed, or is it reliable when it's needed the most? Three years ago against the Rams in the playoffs, threw it a bunch on first and second down, weren't good, and then it's third and eight, not good enough to convert. Last year in the playoffs against the 49ers, got beat up at the line of scrimmage, couldn't run the football at all, but this past first offense couldn't get it done either. And I think that's the little bit of the philosophy of, the philosophy of 
They're truly, truly trying to build for playoff caliber football offensively moving forward. Yeah, it's tricky, Dan, because I completely agree with you about the you know perimeter weapons or lack thereof and some of the adjustments they're going to have to make. And you know when you look at that group and then look at the backs thinking, okay, well, let's lean more on the run game. But I have to see how this run game looks behind this offensive line before yeah. I feel comfortable um, saying that the run game is going to be effective. I mean, Tony talks about the 2016 offense, Travis Frederick, Frederick's not walking through that door. No, I, like, not. You know, it's a, still a good line. You've got Tyron Smith, if he's healthy, Zach Martin. But other than that, you've got new pieces working in, potentially a rookie and Tyler Smith starting. Terrence Steele's played well at tackle. But again, you know, it's, it's not exactly what it was. And Ezekiel Elliott, if you remember, was the most dominant running back in football that year. Led the league in yeah. first downs per rushing attempt, yep. uh, explosive runs. That Ezekiel Elliott, I don't think, is walking through the door. I still think he's a really good back, and I want to be clear, and I'm a huge fan of Tony Pollard as well, who I believe they need to use more in the passing game. But when you look at the pieces, and particularly on that offensive line, it's not as easy as saying, oh, yeah, we're just going to go back to 2016 and run the ball, and it's going to be dominant because they're not as dominant mm -hmm. from a personnel perspective. All right, so, Jeff, you and I are playing in the Fantasy <laughs> Football League together this year, so you have to answer this question. You can't pretend that your audio equipment is going to go out all of a sudden because I want to know. <laughs> what you're hearing about how the Cowboys could divide carries in the running game between Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard. Oh. <laughs> Stop it! Stop. No kidding. All right, all right, I got to Look, <laughs> here's the deal. It, t Tony Pollard absolutely, from my conversations, will have a role in this running game to the point where maybe it does take away early reps from Zeke. But we have to point out that Zeke and Tony have a really good relationship. I don't sense that this is going to be something based on my conversations where Zeke would say, I'm not into this, I'm RB1, absolutely, I need the touches all the time. Pollard proved last year, while not, over, not being like stat heavy, he proved that he is very capable of making some big plays, especially in the mm -hmm. passing game. These guys actually complement each other pretty well. And if this is something that can keep Zeke healthy later in the season, I absolutely believe that the Cowboys will utilize more of a committee approach. That's not to say Zeke won't be the starter. It's just to say that they will be willing to put Pollard in there if it's going to help Zeke get a little bit of rest. In other words, I'm saying you should draft Zeke with your first pick, Field. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I like that. R real quick, the best way, because I think the point of Pollard and Zeke matter, Darlington and their relationship, the, the best way I would describe the Cowboys' offense is it's often been – um, pass when need, run when want. No. And I think it's got to be reversed a little bit. I think it's got to be pass when you want to, run when you need to. Yeah. Their best player on offense yeah. is their mm -hmm. quarterback. So it needs to be this philosophy of, well, we want to throw the ball. Well, let's throw the ball. But they also have to have the capability of, we have to run the football in this situation. Our quarterback cannot do this by himself. He can't carry us by himself. Run it when you need to. Fantasy mm -hmm. football notes right here, courtesy of my friend, Jeff Dar <laughs> Well, here's my, my thoughts on all of this. Again, as I was pointing out, the Dallas Cowboys, we went without Michael Gallup for many, many weeks there in the middle of the season. And with Michael Gallup being gone, the Cowboys did a lot of 12 personnel, and they didn't skip a beat. Quite frankly, I will say when Michael Gallup came back and then you had – three receivers in there that it kind of dictated that we got to throw the football because we got to clear the bench. You know, it's kind of like little league. When you're the little league coach, you got to look around because Johnny's got to get in there so I can get his mom and dad off my back. And I felt like that's the way the offense started running. Um, too many times that we're just going three wide outs because we've got to use everybody. And the reality was the Dallas Cowboys were much more effective using two wide outs in 12 personnel, they just were. And they have to understand that may be our bread and butter. So everybody, I gotta go ahead and get take care of some business. I gotta go pick up some wood and things here, but I am as excited as I can be about the beginning of the season. One more program note. Um, I had been trying to figure out what to call the outdoor studio for a long time and the name is, it's perfect. I think it's perfect. Um, last night when we were doing the, the mega stream, um, 
when Jay Tuck remembered to kind of zoom in on one person that was talking, they zoomed in on me and I did my talking. They were finished and they went back to the whole panel up in there. And I think it was Skywalker Steel that said, wait a minute, go back to Mark, go back to Mark. And I'm like, oh, what did I do now? And they popped me back up on the stream. And he said, one of the comments on the stream was, Mark looks like he's at the zoo. You know, because I got all the greenery behind me, the plants and everything else. And that's the perfect name for the outdoor studio, the zoo. Think about it. Joe Boo's cooking the pulled pork. It's feeding time at the zoo. Perfect name for Sundays. So let me know what you think about that. And if you have a better one, let me know as well. I'm Mark Holmes, and you know how we roll. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo's Sports Report. Get one out of the mouth, and the only thing else I got to say is, Papa!